Hey everybody! Um, Alright, so today I thought I'd just do a quick rundown on some of the things that I use in the Elements panel of Chrome DevTools. Um, before anybody asks, this is Palette Tab. Um, it's my new tab page and I love it. Um, I think it's great. So here is what we do. So we're going to go ahead and go to um, More Tools and Developer Tools. You see that's um, Option Command I and that's what I normally use, Option Command I. Uh, you can also use Option Command J, and that will open you up to the console, um, which I I normally uh, just use the I one. And yeah, uh, when you're in the Elements pa uh, panel, you can hit the Escape key, and that'll pull up the console. And you can also look at a couple other things. Uh, this coverage one is really interesting. Um, you can see what uh, CSS and JavaScript have been shipped, and how much of that has actually been run. Uh, you can get really um, deep into it by double clicking on that and then you can see oh this function was called this function was not uh, this isn't the elements panel but um, yeah kind of interesting you also see what's new which I like to keep up with I am using Chrome Canary um, not because I like living on the edge but because for some reason uh, stable Chrome is not working with PayPal laptops I don't know why um, they're working on it um, so yeah that's that's that but we're gonna be focusing on the elements panel now one thing that the elements panel um, allows you to do in conjunction with the console is um, you'll notice there's this double equal oh there it goes it pops up use dollar zero in the console to refer to this element so there's this double equal dollar zero so if i do dollar zero in the console then i'm going to get a reference to that element i have selected if i select another one you can't actually see that here we go dollar uh, zero on that one so if I dollar zero again then that's going to reference the loader which currently it's not being displayed it's hidden I guess um, but what's interesting and what doesn't show up in here is that you can actually do dollar one to reference the last element that you had selected and dollar two to reference the one before that dollar three is undefined I haven't selected um, that many elements so that's kind of kind of interesting and I use that uh, I don't normally go dollar one dollar two but I Definitely use dollar zero all the time. Super, super helpful. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll say, oh, okay, let's do dollar zero dot style dot display. Um, right now it's set to none. I'm gonna say block, and then it'll it'll show up, which it looks like it's hidden behind this element. So here we'll go ahead and we'll inspect that. We'll say uh, display is um, none, and oh, huh. Let's do this or this one. There we go. Play none on that thing. Ta-da! It's gone. Here we'll we'll go outer wrapper. I want to show the loading thing for crying out loud. All right, there we go. There's the loading spinner thing. So yeah, that's uh, it's kind of interesting. I I use dollar zero pretty frequently, um, and that's mostly my interaction with the console and element, um, the elements panel. Uh, so another thing that I do. Um, on a pretty uh, regular basis is interact with the styles tab here. Um, that one's pretty common, but uh, if you're looking for a particular um, style that's being applied to one of your elements, then you can actually type in the filter width and you'll see um, that is highlighted. That applies also to computed values. So you can say width here and you see, oh, that's uh, width of 100%. Let's find out why that is. We can click on this and it'll take us to the style rules, uh, even if it's not highlighted here. So click on that, it'll take us right to that. It'll highlight it for us so we know where that style rule is coming from. We can click here to uh, take us to the style sheet where that's being applied, which is pretty neat um, in our sources. If you're using CSS and JS and you're, um, you have things configured properly with Emotion, um, this, uh, they actually have source map support where Clicking on this will take you to the JavaScript file where those styles are de uh, defined, which is pretty rad. Um, that really is only a good idea to do in development. In production, you kind of lose that, and it's it's too bad, but um, it is what it is. So uh, let's see, there was something else. Oh, yeah, and you can also do the same thing from the computed as well. The computed is nice because here in the styles, you see all the ones that are a bunch of crossed out things and stuff. You're like, okay, at the end of the day, what is applied to this element? So I use computed there. Um, event listener, listeners is less useful if you're doing React because there are no event listeners on any of the elements because it uses event delegation. So unless you're manually adding those, then um, it's not going to be 
super useful. Resolve event listeners bound with framework. Now that's interesting. Let's see here. If we go repeat, uh, repeat to do.com. This is a React app that I made, and I've got an event listener on the form here. Um, right there. If we go to event listeners framework. See, we've got a submit event listener. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I don't know why that's not toggling back and forth. There we go. Now that's interesting. Huh. So React is adding a submit. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. here oh, if we disable that and then refresh. Hmm. Fascinating. Okay, so I'm not sure if we go sign in and sign up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, yeah, then we got to click on that one. I'm pretty positive that React is not adding an event listener on these. It's using event delegation, but let's see if we get um, get event listeners on element. Do, 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 do. Visual event, what? Mm hmm. Goodness gracious, what is this all about? Okay, yeah, I'm not, oh wait, wait, wait. I think I saw it just right there. Get event listeners. Okay, I should have just looked. Um, get event, oh, mm. get event listeners. There we go, dollar zero. Huh, there is a quick event on this one. That is fascinating. I did not, I'll have to look into this. I was under the impression that React didn't actually add event listeners to elements, but it looks from from the looks of things, it's doing just that. Okay. Anyway, oh, empty function. What is that all about? Empty function. This is this function accepts and discards inputs. It has no side effects. This is really useful. No, no, no. What on earth is this? Reveal and sidebar. This is in Facebook code. It's like a Facebook uh, FBJS lib. It's just a bunch of utilities that they use in lots of their projects. Um, yeah, so interesting. So it looks like React is adding event listeners that don't do anything. I don't know. React is complicated. So anyway, um, coming back here. So I don't, I don't really use event listeners all that often. Now, DOM breakpoints are pretty sweet. Let me see if I can... Uh, trigger one of these DOM breakpoints. There we go, right here. So you see, um, as things are changing in the DOM, um, you get that purple highlight, so it's adding a class. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll add a DOM breakpoint. So break, break on, subtree modifications, attribute mod modifications, node removal. So uh, we're getting attribute modifications, so I'm gonna click on that. And you'll, uh, oh, huh, there it goes. It fired. Okay, let, let's go back, go back. Come on. Okay, I just wanted to show you the little blue dot there. And you click on that and you can uh, change that and whatever. Um, and so here we have that DOM breakpoints uh, attribute modified. We can enable and disable that. If I hover over then, um, then we're going to get that breakpoint and we can see exactly what is going on, why that is firing. Uh, it's paused on attribute modifications. Uh, because we're modifying the elements class list. So then we can um, look at the call stack and see, oh, well, that happened because we had an event listener um, for that mouse out event. And so now it's calling the mouse out. Great. Okay. That's actually super handy. Use that pretty um, fairly regularly. Um, not not a ton, but I use that, use that occasionally. That one's pretty useful. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's useful even in, Re in React context. I uh, probably don't use that as much as I should. Uh, oh, one other thing in the styles thing that I didn't mention is you can also um, force element state. So we can active, focus, uh, focus within, which is a kind of newish, interesting one, hover, and visited. You'll notice that they don't apply any CSS changes uh, based on those. They're all listening to JavaScript um, and adding classes and stuff instead. But that can be useful sometimes. You can also add a new class. So here, mouse over top. So if I wanted to just do that, mouse over top, ta-da. Then I get to see what uh, styles are gonna be applied for that. 
uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, oh, and we've it has autocomplete too, which is interesting. Um, huh, that's fascinating. Um, oh yeah, and we can enable and disable the um, classes that are being applied to it already. Whoa, like all messed up. So yeah, that's kind of fun. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> so properties. Um, it's just properties of the element that you have selected, and then I think, um, yeah, just the um, um, the prototype chain as well. So it's like elements or attributes on this specific element, and then attributes it inherits from its prototype um, chain all the way up. So that one's kind of fun. I don't use that a whole lot, but uh, nor normally what I would do instead, and maybe I should use this more, is I'll just do $0, and you'll notice that it's like, oh, that doesn't show me any of properties, so I'll say console.dir $0, and then I can look at the properties there. So between those two, I think using properties over here is probably a good idea. Um, okay, so accessibility, I think this one actually comes from a Chrome extension that I have installed. So let me see, Chrome. Um, extensions. Um, ex yeah, accessibility developer tools. Let me um find how do I get to this view on web store? I'll paste this in the chat here. Um, so I think I'm pretty sure the audit accessibility audits are built in now. I'm not sure actually. I I feel like some of these things have been built in. So if you see this. Uh, accessibility tab already then that's great but this can be useful for um, seeing the accessibility tree as you're working on accessibility um, problems so um, you can say oh there's no title specified that's why or you know whatever else um, so yep that is accessibility um, and then uh, ADT properties uh, I have no idea what this is. I, yeah, this is part of that accessibility thing, I think. Yeah, I think you're supposed to use the new built-in audits panel um, or the Axe extension, which you should look into as well. Here, I'll click on that and share a link. The Axe extension, I should probably add this myself. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, the audits panel thing that it's talking about, if you go to audits, then you can enable, or yeah, it's enabled by default accessibility, and then you're gonna get a lot of really useful information about accessibility and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I wanted to show for the uh, elements panel. I hope that was useful and interesting, and uh, yeah, hope you have a nice day. I will see you all later. Goodbye.